Transportation Group out of Texas was awarded the, uh, the contract for uh, calibrating the gravity model using AirSage's data, AirSage out of Atlanta. And I want to thank um, Matthew Margo of AirSage and Tim Harvey with Alliance Transportation for getting this project done prior to today. So some of this data I got last week. So it's a simple uh, scope of work. Task one, develop sample origin destination matrices from cell phone data. How many people are going from one zone to another based on uh, cell phone data? Task two, expand that sample OD matrix into uh, internal TAZ trip tables, traffic analysis zone trip tables. Task three, develop our external to external trip tables. How many people are going straight through Mobile? We've got two interstates, we've got I-10 that goes straight through Mobile, and I-65 uh, terminus in, in Mobile, uh, goes from Chicago to Mobile. That's a number that we've never had. Um, we've always estimated our external, external trips. Task four, travel time data and impedance matrix development. This was actually in the scope of work, but it turns out that our travel time data uh, was more accurate than what could be provided. We have a congestion management system or a congestion management process that we take GPS units and run our freeways, principal arterials, and some minor arterials. Uh, in each direction, minimum six times, and then we average those travel times for every road, for every link in our network, and for every 528th section of roads. So we actually have an historical look at our traffic to you. So we have a, a much more detailed, accurate uh, travel time data. Um, now, travel time data can be provided by the cell phone data, but we chose to use our own data. And then the, the whole gist of the study was to calibrate our gravity model, the trip distribution model calibration. This is Mobile County. Um, for those of you who have not been to Mobile, we are to the south of us is the Gulf of Mexico. To the west is the state of Mississippi. To the east is Mobile Bay, Mobile Delta, then Baldwin County are here, then Pensacola, Florida. Um, we have a really relatively small travel demand forecast model. It's 312 uh, internal external zones, or 312 internal zones, 313 13 external zones. We run, right now we run uh, Cube Voyager 6, we used to run Tramplan, um, still used to run Tramplan and DOS, and I find I can't do that anymore, I'm using, using Voyager. Our population uh, of our urban areas is about 380,000, so relatively small, small model. This is a sample of our OD matrix, um, I, there's, there's three matrices in here, our EEs, I run those, uh, preload those to the network separately. And only put the external external trips on the roads that I know will have external external. That way we don't put PEs on our collectors. I have a uh, separate truck matrix that just has trucks, and again, we preload those trucks to only the roads that I know have heavy trucks to keep the trucks off the collectors. And we actually use the freight analysis framework FAF3 data to get that those trucks. Mobile's fortunate enough to have uh, to be a zone in that freight analysis framework for trucks. And then that's our, uh, our trip table. It's 325 zones by 325 zones. I've highlighted zone 34 to 37 because, just in this example, I mean, how do we know there's 47 trips going from zone 34 to 37 and likewise from 37 to 34? Um, and that was just uh, something that we wanted to do with the study. Why are we doing this? Uh, most of you know this, but you take the, the trip table load it to the network and it creates assigned volumes, which is the blue, and then we forecast all the socioeconomic data and then we have a 25 year forecast of what our future roads are going to look like. In our interstates in Mobile, this is uh, 65 uh, going to Montgomery, this is I-10, and you can see it's uh, super congested. Red is capacity deficiency and green is capacity sufficiency. So the cell phone data that we used, uh, from, from AirSage, any time that you have uh, a cell phone with a carrier that, that they have a contract with, if, you, if there's any activity from your phone, whether you start a call, end a call, send a text, receive a text, go on Facebook, if there's an app that updates, they have your relative location. Um, it works kind of like triangulation of GPS units, but it's triangulation of anonymous encrypted frequencies. Uh, and they have the ability to, to not only collect this data, but archive it and average it. 
so the comparison with data sets uh, to calibrate the model, we've never, we've done a, a, a household survey as part of our carpool program. We kind of made the mistake of where you live um, wasn't very accurate. People would say where you live is in West Mobile, where you work, downtown. And when you're trying to put those to traffic zones, that didn't help us very much. Um, travel diary, uh, the household travel survey is a one day snapshot. The cell phone data, you can get a large sample. And I know that AirSage has archived some of this data up to three years. The survey sample, uh, the household travel survey is usually a, limited to a small sample. And uh, the cell phone data can be a, a very, very large sample. There are non response issues with the travel time data, the household travel surveys, and when, when it's reported electronically, you don't have that non response issue. Um, and then one thing that the household travel survey does have is the ability to obtain more detailed information on household characteristics like income and whatnot that, that you don't have with the cell phone data. With the cell phone data, you're given a location, a time of day, and that can be averaged, and that's relatively what you have with the cell phone data. This is from uh, May 2012, and, and that 12 weekday period, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, there were 192,107 devices sampled. Um, and of those, all those 192,100 devices, each had about 67 locations per device per day. So we're talking a huge amount of data. Um, and we actually had, it's, it's a coincidence that this map, this map actually looks like our census urban boundary. Um, actually, I don't think it's a coincidence. And we had about 40 to 50 percent penetration here, and some zones in here in Mobile um, were pretty high penetration of the cell phone data. So of that, um, they were able to analyze 1,560,501 tricks based on that data. Um, the way that they analyze it is that if you're, you've got a cell phone from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and you receive an email, you receive a call, it pings for that month, and it's pinging at that constant location when you're at work. Now we have your work zone. From uh, 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., for example, uh, for the month, that's where your cell phone is pinging. So now we have your home zone. So now we have the ability to put your home zone and your work zone in a trip table for only 312 traffic zones. This is what 192,107 lines look like on a map. Um, this is uh, Mobile Bay, this is uh, Gulf Island, the Gulf of Mexico down here. There's a lot of east-west movement that was captured over that month. There's a lot of movement going to uh, the Sugar White Sands or Gulf Shores and Orange Beach down here in South Baldwin County. Um, and a lot of people going to the uh, Indian Creek Casino, which is right there. So of those 192,107 devices that were looked at in the month of May, about 46% or 88,000 were resident devices within the study area. Of those total trips, the the 1,560,501,501 trips, 82% of those are resident trips. So we fur further analyze that with 1.2 million, the device type distribution, the resident, which is the resident non-worker trips, is about 562,406,000 trips. And the resident worker trips was 711,197. You add those two together and it should be the, the 1.2 million trips. Visitor trips is something that we didn't account on, on looking at. I'm not sure what we're going to do with this. I'm probably going to redo my trip generation with this uh, figure because it's uh, about 15% of our of the trips. But that's how many people that through that month um, they only saw for a couple days. Okay, so they're not non-home based trips. They're not internal external trips. They're uh, they're visitor trips. And then through trips is a number that we're looking at as well. So this is um, how I described the 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. We know your home location and your work location. Um, they do the same thing likewise from work to home. Your average work location for that month, if you go to another zone, that's now an other. So now we have home base other. We have other other, which would be non-home base. And then the reverse of that, home to other, work to other, other to work, and work to work, and home to home. Um, and all those should equal our uh, 
1,273,000 trips, resident trips. So those trips, those trip purposes defined by uh, air saves look a lot like the trip purposes that we have in our four-step uh, model. Home-based work, home-based other, non-home-based, external, internal, and external, external. Now, the, the trip for Alliance was to stratify these by income range so we were able to they were able to calibrate the gravity model. So to compare some of our internal trips by purpose, uh, 2007, MATS is, is the name of our study, Mobile Area Transportation Study. This is before they started. It, uh, our base year is actually 2010, and it, it was 2005. Unfortunately, we had half of our traffic counts before Hurricane Katrina. Mm -hmm. Then we had half of our counts after Hurricane Katrina. So try to validate a model for that. It's not, it wasn't possible. So we moved the date back two years the counts over, and our last model was 2007. Home-based work trips was about 26% of the trips, which may have been fine in the 80s, I mean, in the 1980s, 20 years ago. But the, the new NCHRP 2009 report 716 suggests that they should be between 14 and 15% of the trips, which the cell phone data was a lot closer to that. Home-based other, our trips looked... Uh, pretty close to the, the SHRP ranges, and then for the non-home base, uh, we were low, and the, the cell phone data is pretty high, the SHRP is between 30 and 31 percent, and the cell phone data is creating about 37 percent of non-home base trips, and I have a feeling that some of those trips are the visitor trips that I was talking about. So calibrating the, uh, the trip distribution, um, you match the model. <coughs> data and keep Voyager to the observed cell phone data. And you do this for the trip length, frequency distribution, the average trip length by trip purpose, and the area to area flows. And there is an iterative process of developing uh, the gamma function, the friction factor curves, until the above trip length frequency distribution matches the cell phone data, the average trip length by trip purpose matches the cell phone data, and the area to area flows match as well. These are the friction factors. Uh, the red is the home base work friction factor. The green is the home base other, and the blue is the non home base. I know it doesn't look necessarily like uh, the regular monotonic friction factors are supposed to look like, but these are the ones that calibrated and validate my model, and I'm happy with it. These are the uh, triple length frequency distribution curves that were produced. Um, the blue is the observed cell phone data, and the green is the uh, what came out of the model with the friction factors. So, uh, home base work, home base other, non home base. And they are relatively close to the same uh, trip length frequency distribution curve. The average trip lengths um, for home base work, the cell phone data produced an average trip length of about 18.19 minutes, and the, uh, the model produced 18.16, and that's Pretty close. Home base other 15.87 minutes with the model producing 15.79 and the non home base 17.2 minutes and the model 17.09. Um, those look pretty close to me as far as uh, calibrating the average trip lengths. The coincidence values are all above 0.75, so um, it's considered to be an effective model calibration. This is a uh, really a plot of the trip ends. The red is the cell phone data. The green is what's produced by the model, and the number of trips is on the, the y-axis. And you can see, um, what I've kind of learned is these are our outline zones, okay, starting about uh, 215. That's actually our rural undeveloped area, and the cell phone is producing more trips uh, than what the model is producing. So. Now that I've got the study, I'm going to go back at some point in the future and relook at my trip, trip generation. Um, there are some spikes that's produced by the cell phone data that's not produced by the model, and likewise, there are spikes produced by the model, not by the cell phone data. And then if you recall, in one of my beginning slides, I showed you the trip table that there are 47 trips going from zone 37 to 34, and right here it's, a, it's about. Uh, 47 trips is about 60, 61 trips compared to the cell phone data. So the model is validated based on the friction factors created. Uh, the left is uh, functional classification. 
So total assigned volume and uh, counted volume are all pretty close within uh, percentage count, 99.4% of the count. And our total uh, model VMT to our counted VMT is at about 100.1%. Um, RMS is 33%, so it's a, it's a validated model. We have about 25 screen lines. Um, all the screen lines are great and are well within the federal parameters. So we had some uh, issues and concerns with the data. The cell phone data really only provides the geographic location, the household uh, income data still has to come from the census. The travel time information, it, it can be calculated from the cell phone data, but there's much more accurate, detailed ways of getting um, cell, uh, travel time information by using GPS units. The distribution can be skewed by service area. And we had, uh, an example of that is one of the mother carriers picked up service between <coughs> April 2010 and October 2010. And they picked up service towards Mississippi. So uh, in April, we didn't see those trips going to Mississippi. Yet in October, we did see those trips going to Mississippi. So you couldn't use an average of the data. You always had to use the latest, uh, greatest data. And I think uh, AirSafe has fixed that, and now we're using the May 2012 data. And then proximity of external stations. That's an extreme case in Mobile. We have uh, I-10 by a parallel to US-90. So what trips we're using you know, at that ex external station was, a, was an issue as well. So the good news, um, cell phone data clearly captures data not typical of household surveys, including visitor trips, which I didn't account for uh, when we started this. The trip matrices by purpose can be developed from cell phone data. Um, and this is a developing technology, and I think both Alliance and AirSage can tell you that this stuff changes every day. Um, there's a lot of things that have to be uh, figured out. I know one of the things, one of the carriers, the, your anonymous encrypted frequency changes periodically, um, and they had to figure that out, and they've, they've figured this out now. So the cell phone observations, our travel time info, the census data, our traffic counts, all create enough data to, uh, to calibrate the model, and we now have an accurately calibrated and validated base your network. Um, and when we started this, we're all, we were you know, starry-eyed starry about different things that the data can do. It's been about two years, and um, I'm happy with the results, and I think it's going to change the way that the, uh, the models are calibrated in the future. We have a few minutes to take some questions from the floor from Mr. Harrison. Thank, thank you very much. That was really well explained. That was, that was good. Thank you. I, 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 did, I have one question. You, you, you've probably given a lot of thought to ways to account for the facts. Like there might be equal work at night. And so, is that kind of, how do you, without going into all the details, how did you work, or how do you work with the, with AirSage to, I guess, bring in heuristics or algorithms well, to account for anomalies? Actually, I've, their stage is all the data, so you're going to have to ask them. But there are a lot of filters that they've spent a ton of time going through. You know, how do we know that all those people aren't teenage high school girls? You know, right. texting and going on Facebook. So, but there's filters for all that, and they figured that out. Now, I think that last slide with the trip fins produced by the cell phone data. I mean, it's pretty similar to what's being produced by the model. So they figured these filters out, and um, you know. So what they give you is the OD. They give you the OD table. Right. And then, and then Alliance uh, calibrated, calibrated the model, validated the model based on that data. Yes? Uh, what did this cost? Uh, I think there's members of AirSage and Alliance in the room. I mean, it was a, it was a demonstration project. It was, a, it was, it was over 100, 150,000. Any more questions? Well, did that cost for just the data or for the... That was that was for both, but this has been a learning process for both of them. So um, I don't know if it'll cost the same now. I mean, this was a, supposed to be a one-year project. It was a two-year project. Um, problems kept coming up that, that we weren't you know, aware of because this is a new technology and it's changing every day. So they might have a better handle on how much it's going to cost. Now. <laughs> Um, the, uh, uh, yeah, well, I like the, uh, the comparison of friction factors. You said you're going to go back. <coughs> is it, is, so is your expectation 
that the, the visiting trips, they would have previously been accounted as home-based other, and you're expecting that when you bring the visiting trips in, they'll be something else that would include... They would have been probably non-home-based. Okay. That's why that one slide showed a high factor of non-home-based trips. I think that's where those visitor trips were going in, in the model. And I know there's other people around the country that, that do the same thing using hotel rooms and their trip generation. Um, we may decide to do that, but, but we're a relatively small model, 325 zones. So um, we'll probably go back and look at that because we can. It probably be pretty easy data to obtain the number of hotel rooms and, and where people are actually visiting the mobile. Which, if you get a chance, y'all please come visit the mobile. <laughs> <laughs> With that, please uh, show your appreciation for Mr. Harrison. Next on our agenda this afternoon for our 